bespoke line charts, a gauge chart. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, we have lines going all the way around. We will be able to change the number of degrees, i.e. in this case, it's 270. But we are going to make this dynamic. We're also going to have the extended lines as well, just for that nice gauge effect. If you ever looked at a dashboard where you saw a dial that looks like it comes from a car, a gauge, like a speedometer, this is for you. So let's get started by opening Tableau Desktop. So the first thing we are going to do is load our sample store's data source. So let's select Microsoft Excel. Double click on the Superstore. And now I want us to take orders and drop that into the query panel. However, we're not quite done because we want to add an additional layer of data densification. I want us to double click on the logical table to open it up so we get to see the physical tables. From here, I want you to open up Excel or equivalent spreadsheet editor. I want you to type path 100 0 100 0. Next to this, I want us to type position. And here, I want us to type 1.2, 1.2. 1 and 1. What we're going to do is merge this with our orders data source so that we have the various values that we can play with and draw out our shape. So let's copy this, go back into Tableau, and paste it directly in. You'll see an error, but no worries. If you go to create join calculation, type in one, click OK. Let's do the same with the other side. Create join calculation, type one, OK. So this will perform a Cartesian join, multiplying every row in orders with every row in our new sheet or our pasted sheet, which I will call model. With that done, let's go into our sheet one and let's start building our data visualization. As we are doing data densification, the first thing I want to do is right click on path, go to create, select bins, and give the value of one. I also want a element of control. So I'm going to create two parameters. The first parameter, I will name degrees. I will allow this to be an integer. And by default, 270 degrees. Click OK. The next one, next parameter will be name large, large x every. So how often in our gauge will we have a large spike? I'm going to say, let's make this large every five. So every five lines, there'll be an outstretched line. Let's click OK. Now, as we do, let's create a new calculated field. And let's call this index. We will put index minus one. Nice and easy. I now want us to create a wrapper for TC position just to make sure that it's available. So TC position, remember as we are using data densification, we will need to wrap our fields in table calculations to make sure that they are accessible. So nice and simple, Windows max, max position. Now finally we need two Calculate the fields, one for the x axis and one for the y. So nice and easy, for x we will type cos, radians, let's put an index in there, and we are going to multiply by tc position. Nice and easy. 
I now want us to duplicate this. Right click and duplicate. Right click and edit. I want to rename this to Y and change cos to sine. Perfect. Now I want to change the mark type to line. That's what we're going to be doing. Let's take region and drop that into columns. Let's take X and drop it next to region on columns. Let's take Y and drop it into roles. So we're building this out slowly. Let's take path bin, drop it onto roles. Right click and ensure that show missing values has been ticked. Now we're going to drag this back into path, uh, not path, into details. Now I want us to take position and drag that into path. I want us to right click and select dimension. You can see the lines are coming. Now finally, I want us to right click on X, go to compute using path bin. Almost getting there. Let's do the same with Y. Go to compute using path bin. And there we go. We have our lines coming out nice and smoothly. However, one last touch, double click on the X axis and let's reverse this. So let's select reverse. So it starts from left and it goes all the way around. Beautiful. As with our other data visualizations, we do want to push this around. We don't want this to be as scrumped. Therefore, we want to create a step size. We have some space between each of the lines. So let's create a new parameter, not parameter, new calculation. Let's call this TC step size. Within this, we are going to say windows max max off so we're going to take the maximum value within the path again this will be 100 in our case divide by windows max index again this depends on how many segments there are and that gives us our step size however we also want to bend it further depending on our parameter so we're going to multiply this by degrees so if we have 100 points we want to multiply this and make it 180 degrees or 270 we need to multiply it by 1.8 or 2.7 however we want to allow people to enter 270 degrees for example so we have to divide this by 100 and that gives us our step size calculation Let's click on X, let's edit this, and now we want to multiply the index by the TC step size. We want to do the same with Y. So we're now just adding a little bit extra space between the lines so that it pushes around into 270 degrees. Let's right click on X, go to compute using, half bin, and let's do the same for the Y object. This is what we're talking about. We now have this beautiful shape. So now that this shape is complete, let's actually start adding our data to this. We will do this as always. We're going to base this on cells. So let's create a new calculated field called TC cells windows sum sum of cells but we have to divide this by four the main reason because we've for every or line in the orders data source we multiplied it or we've duplicated that line four times because of the cartesian join we did in our data source as long as we divide it by four it should be perfectly fine Let's duplicate this and rename this as 
Auto cells. Nice and simple. And again, let's create a calculated field called TC percentage, which would be TC total cells divided by TC, well, TC cells divided by total cells. Nice and easy. And finally, as we've done in previous exercises, we are going to create a TC color. This will be if index divided by windows max index. So if that is less than or equal to TC percentage, then let's put windows max max region else gray. We've done this a few times now, so hopefully this will be almost second nature to you all. Let's click apply. Looks good. Let's click OK. Now I want us to take TC color and drop that onto the color mark. I want us to right click on TC color, go to compute using, and select path bin. Almost there. Now I want us to go to TC color. Right click, go to edit table calculations. And now under total cells, I want us to tick on region. And as you can see, that looks like it's doing the job. Beautiful. I want us to double click on gray. And I want to set this color now to gray. Here we go. Now the final step will be to add our extensions. So to actually send out these lines a little bit further based on our parameters. So now I'm going to show our parameters. So we have 270 degrees. And we want this to be large every five. So we are going to create a calculation. Let's create a calculated field. Let's call this TC extend. We're going to say if index, use the modulo, large every x is equal to zero, and TC position is equal to 1.2, then let's extend it slightly, else leave it as 1. So we're just going to extend, if the index, for example, if large every is 5, and we do a modulo, it's highlighting every fifth item, and then it's pushing up the position. Have a think about this, once you have, Let's click OK. Now we are going to add this to our X and Y. And we're just going to multiply the end by TC extend. Let's click OK. You see it's slowly looking like it's happening. But let's do the same for Y. And look at that. So to finish this off, I now want a value in the center. So let's see how we can create that. Let's create a calculated field and call this zero. And literally put a zero inside. I'm now going to drag zero and drop it into columns. As you can see, there's some points there. I'm going to right click on zero and dual axis. Now with the X mark, let's get rid of measure names because we don't want that. And in the following, on the zero, let's also get rid of measure names. Again, we don't need this. What I want us to do now is drag region so let's find it 
and drop it into the label. I also want to get rid of position and path most likely. And actually while we're at it, actually that should be enough. Let's click on the four nulls and let's show this our default position which is zero. Here we have it. Lastly, let's change the mark type to text. Beautiful. You know what? We don't need the color. Let's take that off as well. Now, I want to take the TC cells and also drop the empty text. Actually, no, we don't need TC cells. Let's take the cells. Double click and let's divide it by four. Remember, we've multiplied our data by a lot. Let's take cells and drop it into text as well. Let's right click on this. Let's use quick table calculations and say percentage of total. There we go. Now after this is a very simple task of formatting. So let's do that. Let's hide our region. We don't need to see zeros. We don't want to see the x axis. We don't want to see the y header either. We do not need to see the color since it's already in our data visualization. Let's format the text. Let's access the zero mark panel. Let's move some stuff around. So you do what you want here. Firstly, my style is to have the region with a bit of oomph. Let's have that as 12. Let's increase the size here. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. I am now going to take the line, turn it very, very light, make it small. Last but not least, I'm going to right click on the cells, go to format. I'm going to convert this to a currency. Let's go to United States, click on custom. Let's make it one decimal place and let's the display as thousands. And now we can also hide the region header that's no longer needed. We still need it there because we want to petition. Now, last but not least, let's format. Let's remove the grid lines. Let's remove the zero lines. We don't want any of that. Actually, let's just keep removing just for fun and posterity. Now, remove the column and the row lines. And here we go. Let's call our sheet Rush Gauge Chart. And now we can have a little bit of fun. So let's go to format, let's enable animations, and we are going to test our data visualization. We're going to test what we've built. So we are going to enable animations, duration one second. Now let's change this to 180 degrees. How about large every 10? Let's make it 270 again. How cool is that? The key thing here is that we had our orders data source. We brought in additional data, our model. We put it all together. We created our frame. We added our data in terms of the color, in terms of the actual values. And more importantly, we've created a very cool looking chart. I hope you've learned something here. This is rather difficult. The calculations, do revisit, do revisit the lesson. But once you're happy, I'll see you in the next lesson.